Okay, okay, let's get into it. This is D, and I'm back on D's verdict. I'm gonna bring you season one, episode three of Super Size Salon. They are looking on the low to get DeMarco. Do they catch DeMarco cheating? And we see A Love and 007 are bumping heads again. Are the ladies gonna learn to stay out of Jamie's business? But let's get into it and we will find out, honey. Well, we start this episode. We are back at Baby Doll Salon and we have the ladies popping in. They are starting they, their day. Um, in past episodes, um, we saw where the they were having trouble getting the uh, pedicure ch chairs in. And was DeMarco really helpful with that? So again, we are back uh, with that issue and we have DeMarco showing up to try to get these pedicure chairs in. As we know, they are uh, personalized for plus size women. They are accommodating um, the weight. They are uh, specialized for Jamie's salon. This is what her salon is all about, accommodating plus size women, making them feel comfortable. And we see DeMarco here trying to help get the chairs in. And um, BB says, uh, I have like 200, negative 200% faith in anything DeMarco does, and I'm going to get my popcorn and see how this goes. So DeMarco and his crew attempt to try to get the chairs in. Uh, while they're doing that, uh, 007 asks Jamie, like, what are you going to do um, after all that, that they can't get the chairs in? She like, he know it's going to be bad if he can't get these chairs in here, because um, your man better come through. So we're going to see DeMarco try to get these chairs in and he fails epically again. And um, so they try and try and they're thinking, can they just zip, zip, saw it? OK, <laughs> can they just saw it? You, you know, DeMarco down for, you know, just doing whatever, some type of savage shit to get the chairs in. But OK, so uh, he goes in to tell Jamie, of course, that they couldn't get the chairs in. And Jamie is like, do I need to call somebody else, um, you know, like a carpenter or something? <coughs> 007's over there coughing, saying, yeah, like call a carpenter. And, uh, you know, DeMarco takes that all very lightly. And he's like, uh, whatever, somebody got a cold over there. What's going on? Um, he totally ignores them. So they leave and go try to get the chairs together but when you know one door closes another one opens and we see Abel who is a friend of Jamie's and he is a handyman that she uses from time to time. Abel comes in ready y'all with a bucket of, of tools unlike DeMarco. DeMarco didn't have one tool in hand none of them people he had with him had nothing not a hammer not a nail a bucket or nothing but we see that Abel is coming in ready. And the ladies are all smiles. They kind of start, you know, saying, mm, honey, looks like Abel does all the things your man does not do, Jamie. So, you know, what's that about? So they all have a good, you know, little fun with that while Abel is fixing things. They introduce him themselves. Look at Todd introducing herself to Abel, honey. Just, just flirting. Mm-hmm. We see Abel actually doing some work and that goes really good. So next we see DeMarco and his crew back wherever they are, somewhere look like in the hood trying to get these chairs together, honey, pulling out a saw and they saw the legs off um, a little shorter. So later, like late, late, late in the day, um, which 007, like a day later, here come DeMarco back, always a day late and a dollar short uh, showing up. So he shows up and they still are like on a hope and a prayer. Do Is he going to get these chairs in here? Are they going to fit? And they look and look at Taj and BB. Uh, all BB needed some popcorn and she will be ready for the show. So DeMarco finally gets these chairs in, honey. And he really take a bow, but too soon. Too soon, DeMarco, to take a bow. Because the chairs are unleveled where he has sawed the legs off savagely and not sanded shit and the chairs are have a little wobble. So Jamie like, uh-uh, that's not going to work. Look, BB is cracking up. Like she just is, is just can't catch herself over there. She is cracking up over there and look at Jamie. On the other hand, Jamie is like pissed the hell off 
looking at her phone, trying to ignore that BB is laughing her ass off at this situation. So um, DeMarco whips out a uh, sander like on the spot in there and uh, fixes it. He gets the chairs in. He wants a bow. Um, Astra gives him a little fake um, celebra celebration, like woohoo, whatever you want. Uh, okay. Um, so um, he gets the chairs in and, you know, look, he wants his little recognition for doing something. And Jamie has already said that DeMarco always, you know, he disappoints her, then he reigns her back in, and then he uh, redeems himself some kind of way. Look at that, with that. Mm. Just savagery, DeMarco. Okay. So uh, the next day, they are all back at the salon, and um, it, we see A Love and everybody are morning people. <laughs> They're happy. Uh, Taj is, I mean, is happy. Uh, 007 is not really a morning person. And so they get in there and they start talking and saying, we need some marketing. Like we need to let people know that we are here and let them know that where to come, where to come to baby doll couture. We need to advertise. So they hop into the social media booth and do a quick, uh, little advertisement they put out. And that is so cute. They're sitting there talking and uh, later on, you know, just chit chatting. And, you know, 007 seems to bring up her personal life, then gets offended when somebody inter interjects or says something, which is usually 007 hopping in, like saying something always. And of course, they kind of end up into it a little bit about that, but they move on and they bring up um, having a dinner at Jamie's and discussing that. And see, the subject of cooking greens come up. They said they want the menu to be keto friendly for everybody. And they start talking about what everybody's going to bring because it's going to be like a potluck. Well, the, this doesn't go well because A-Love is saying we want greens. Everybody like greens. But we know that we don't eat everybody greens. Now, we know that we want the greens to be right. Now, if you say you're going to bring the greens to the gathering, we we expect you to show up and show out on them greens. We expect them to be fine. We expect them to be water in our mouth, honey. We don't want greens being bad, honey. Don't show up with bad greens at the gathering. So a love like uh, you, you going to make them, you're going to do them right. Well, they go. She was talking about a pressure cooker. People may not. Everybody cook their greens a different way. So 007 is offended that. A love thinks she can't cook greens. Mm. BB is unbothered by their drama because there's always drama between A love and 007, and we're only in episode three. <laughs> so <laughs> BB just be looking unbothered by a lot of it. So um, they go back and forth, and it's just like forget it. If you're gonna cook the greens, you are. If you're not, you're not. Whatever, whatever. A love like, well, I just get the ingredients for what I'm gonna cook. Don't worry about it. You just handle what you're gonna handle. If you say you're gonna cook the greens, so. They settle that part, we think. But while they're doing all that, honey, BB is exiting stage left. You will see BB do that a couple of times, maybe another time in this episode. BB is exiting, honey. I'm out. Mm -mm, I don't have time for none of this here. Bye. So, uh, A Love and Astra make a little trip to the grocery store to get some ingredients. And it is just fun. They The, the mood is lightened because Mr. Ernie at the grocery store seems to have a fetish for BBWs. And they asked, you know, they telling him that we want our meat cut thick like us. And Mr. Ernie said, no, you're not thick. You sexy. You said y'all just thick and sexy, honey. Mr. Ernie for getting his flirt on. But at the end, after having all the little fun at the grocery store, they uh, really hope that things go well at this dinner at Jamie's because it's going to take a hope and a prayer for A-Love and 007 to get along. So uh, we move on to that and. The next day, it is business as usual at the salon, and we actually see Jamie um, d uh, working on a client. She's doing a makeover, and we've seen this client in a previous episode, so she is loving uh, Baby Doll Couture, and since she is a repeat customer. So she comes in, the day goes well, but Astra notices that Jamie is not herself, and she asks her what's wrong, and she we see on the screen what's wrong. It's DeMarco. DeMarco, DeMarco, DeMarco. He is a liar. Jamie says she is fed up with him. And this is evidently uh, spilling over into the salon. So they all want to know what's going on. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, they do talk about that. And they do say, well, you know, Jamie has not been herself today. She's been awfully quiet. Is it her health issues or is it DeMarco? 
uh, is, is it that she's worried about what's going on with him? So the next day, Jamie comes in and she's just kind of hanging out at the salon. She's not just hanging with them. She wants to be there. And so um, they are there and a love has a customer, which is a male customer that wants his hair braided. They chit chat and salon talk can be kind of raunchy <laughs> in a female salon, but this guy was pretty cool and he was happy with his hair and um, he, he is very happy with his hair and uh, we move on from that. And um, they talk to uh, Jamie and let her know Todd is concerned as to what's going on. And uh, they want to know what, you know, what is it? You know, is it the fact that, you know, DeMarco, what's going on? So uh, she lets her know, lets Jamie, uh, uh, Todd lets Jamie know, I got your back and I'm here for you, you know, whatever you have going on. And, you know, just let us know. And um, it, it's, it's really w weird how it's working in, you know, is it Jamie's health problems or is it DeMarco? And um, however, Todd feels in her opinion that DeMarco doesn't matter because her friend um, is going to be with who she wants. Like she doesn't get into the whole DeMarco thing and others do. And you'll see that Todd and BB really don't get involved with that because they're smart. So uh, basically, you know, constantly telling your friend that her man, you know, ain't shit is not really good. And they have been really on Jamie about DeMarco. She, Jamie does vent about DeMarco. But A Love and 007 like are straight up in your face. I cannot stand Demarco at every chance we get. Even though Jamie vents about it, it's not. I don't think it's wise. So we'll see how that ends. And um, next we see Jamie 007 and Astra hanging out at Jamie's house. And of course, Jamie brings up again how she just can't trust Demarco. Like it is just she's just sick at the fact that. She thinks he's still cheating. He's cheating again. And, um, you know, she just wonders, like, can he sneak a woman in here while I'm in the back of the house? And they actually go through DeMarco's office. Look at um, A-Love's face just at the sight. I mean, the sound of DeMarco's name. And they go through his office, y'all. And they find <laughs> Astra actually says he probably could sneak a, a skinny bitch in here. And they find a waist trainer. They like this waist trainer can't fit nobody in here. We know he cheating. We know he cheating. We just know. And um, they all plan on staking out DeMarco, honey. They're going to lurk on the low and get DeMarco. They are going to catch him cheating. Jamie actually says, ladies, I want y'all to watch him. Jamie is encouraging this. And she, she, you know, even talks with, she's sitting there while they plot to plan a stakeout on DeMarco, like who going to drive and who going to do what. So, uh, 007 even says in her confessional that she's never wanted so bad to find something wrong. And that maybe if they find enough evidence on DeMarco, she'll give um, DeMarco, if she finds enough, they find enough evidence on DeMarco that Jamie will give him the boot. We don't know. We will see. Um, so they make a pact to go incognito and they are going to follow DeMarco and we will see how that plays out. Now, as you see, J uh, BB and uh, Taj are nowhere to be found at this plotting of this stakeout. They are out on a night on the town having a good time and they uh, show up at the bar. They say they, say they actually met each other on Tinder. Hmm. So they are at the bar having a good time and they want to know where all the, you know, where the action at, you know, because they single and ready to mingle and looking good. They talk to the bartender and Taj actually flirts with the bartender. She like, um, if I put your number in my phone, you know, will you get in trouble? Um, because, you know, I want to be able to, you know, call you, you know, and see if what's popping it up here and you can let us know what's what's going on. We can, you know, we can come back through. So the dudes flirting and it, it uh -uh. they flirting, they butt off, honey, Todd, you looking right cute. He flirting right back with that mask on, still giving her the eyes. And BB says, honey, he know he got more than a stiff drink for you, baby, honey. He got more than that. Mm, we'll see, honey, because Taj and BB are single and ready to mingle. And they want to know where the daddy's at. So uh, that tonight we are at the dinner. They all are showing up. Things are going well. Um, everybody's in a very festive mood. And um, we see them, you know, making a little toast. Um, but 007 coming in in a totally different mood. She is, we can tell off top that her mood is off. Her energy is off because she, first of all, her makeup not on. 
<laughs> and she we don't we don't see any glasses or nothing. She you can tell by the way she dressed. She's not in a good mood. And she says, you know, I had a lot going on. I had the biggest argument, the last blowout with the exes, which are her ex married uh, lovers. They are a couple that she was in a throuple with, as she called it. And she not in the mood. So, you know, she showed up. Look what she got in her hand. Only a bottle. 007 don't have any greens in her hand. Where are the greens, 00? Where they at? So um, they kind of sit around and they going, things start going okay until the greens come up. And they like, where the greens at? What happened? And um, 007 is like, you know, just a lot of stuff went on. They didn't get made. They didn't get made. Plus, um, A Love didn't have faith in my um, um, method of cooking the greens anyway. Look, 00, that's an excuse. We know a lot went on, but See, you didn't have to say you were going to cook the greens if you were not. And they have a little exchange about that. But then Jamie brings up DeMarco and how she can't trust him. And she know he cheating again. She know the signs. She's seen it before. And ladies, y'all going to have to watch him, honey. I, she says, I told him that I got friends with cards and we'll just pull up the pull up team. We're going to be on the pull up team. And look at baby. No drama. She don't want any part of it. She's looking like, you're right, not me. I won't be pulling up on DeMarco ass nowhere. Not me. Uh-uh. And the night goes on and actually Astra asked her, like, Jamie, you haven't been able to walk out on DeMarco on your own? And, um, and Jamie says, no, that's sad. I can't bring myself to leave him. I depend on him a lot. She evidently depends on DeMarco for a lot. She says he's basically her legs. He does a lot for her. Physically, even though she cannot trust him, she depends on him. And that is very sad. So they all get ready to sit down and eat. And well, Ayla uh, 007 has a problem again. Now she thinks uh, Astra has taken her seat. And Astra, like, it is not that serious. We are all here to eat. And it's enough room for you to sit over here. Why are you tripping? Um, you know, like what? It ain't like you got to throw your bows while you eat. And look, she didn't, in her confessional said, we, we're not doing all that. <laughs> Why, why you got to act like you need that much room? We're we just eating. Um, clearly, 007 came in with an attitude, BB says, in her confessional, honey, it was going to be a fight with anybody. And, you know, if it's not a love, well, it was whoever was was taken. Really, and, you know, Astra stay sprinkling love and joy. Why you want to come for Astra, 00? Don't leave Astra alone. Astra is just cute. But BB, honey, always recognized that drama. She said, honey, she had it when she came through the door only with that bottle in her hand. But anyway, so they sitting down at the table and um, Astra and um, Todd just saying, you know, I can't really eat much. You guys, you know that. And we found find out that um, Taj had weight loss surgery in 2014. She had gastric bypass surgery. And Astra is kind of asking her questions like, how do you eat? How does it work? And Taj gives us that example that her stomach is the size of an egg and she can only eat like a third of her plate and that it is a dedicated, a serious process when you have gastric bypass, that it is a lifestyle change. And sometimes people may not understand it, but you have to be dedicated to that because it, it can be life threatening. And I know somebody that has had the gastric bypass surgery, but Taj lets us know that she has lost over 100 pounds since she had the weight loss surgery. And there is a before and after she says that her heaviest, she was 370. And she says that, you know, um, it's been has not been easy to keep the weight off, weight off but it, it's a process and she looks great. And we're going to see how that goes. And then, um, well, actually, BB asked, you know, well, what's the difference between your weight loss journey and Jamie's asking Todd's that? And Jamie answers and says, well, actually, I haven't had gastric bypass. I, she must be have doing been doing um, other methods of weight loss. And she said she's going to try the gastric bypass for her last couple of hundred pounds. And that's the difference that she has not had any type of surgical procedures for weight loss at this time. And um, so 007 makes a comment um, um, somehow in there. And well, a love says, honey, it is not always about you. And here they go. They get into it again that, you know, uh, 007 makes things all about her. And um, they have an exchange where 007 says, you know, you know, you are the turn up queen. Like, I really don't do your drama. You know that. And, um, uh, you know, I'm really tired of you coming from me. They get to arguing and things go bad. And they have an exchange back and forth about 
007 being dramatic, wanting to be this everything to be about her. And um, that just, you know, doesn't go well. Everybody starts leaving. Um, we see that BB and Taj have made their exit, honey. Jamie exits to the bedroom. And um, in the car, they it's like, look, they always do this. If they had focused, if they would focus more on the business and put in more, you know, into the business, the energy they put into this drama and arguing, we would all be better off like we would be on top. And I totally agree with that because they really need to get past their drama. Uh, A Love and 007, they stay at each other's throats like constantly. Um, I really don't know what that is. That's an interesting dynamic to watch play out in the uh, rest of the season. And uh, when Jamie leaves, Jamie is like, you know, if if some shit going to pop off, it's going to be a love and double O. If every time, like every time I try to work something, get something going, if it's going to get messed up, a love and double O seven, go mess it up with their arguing or their bickering. And um, so Astra talks to them. And like, y'all have got to make a conscious effort on how to get, you know, talk to each other the right way uh, because A-Love felt some type of way about Double O telling her to shut up. Um, it's just little things. So it has to be a conscious effort, Astra says, between the both of you to talk positively, positively to each other and keep a positive mindset and know that we're here for a goal and, you know, not and bring positive energy at, at all times, even when you want to bring some negative. So the next day they are back in the salon. Taj and BB are looking cute, looking like little twins with their little outfits on. They said they are single and ready to mingle. They have come to work and to have some fun. And they said, don't hate. They they looking real cute. And so they're talking and they, they start talking about uh, lurking on DeMarco, catching him cheating. Jamie's not there today. And they are all like, look, it, it, everybody seems to think it has to do with DeMarco. However, BB feels that they should keep their butts out of Jamie business. Look, you should not be in your girlfriend's business telling her who to love, who to be with, because that's who she want to be with. And I totally be am with BB on that, that they should stay out of Jamie's business. But 007, who is the one who probably cannot stand DeMarco the most because she's very close with Jamie. And she probably has seen a lot of what DeMarco has put Jamie through, um, maybe more than some of the others. And so firsthand, sometimes you, you want to keep your friend from hurting and going through stuff. And um, she's convinced that she's got to catch DeMarco cheating. And they go on. And here we are on the stakeout. Lurking on the low, we got to get DeMarco. They are serious about this stakeout, y'all. But back at the dinner, Jamie had, had asked a question, they had made a statement that she told, asked DeMarco, what would they find? If the ladies followed him. So DeMarco probably know he being followed. But anywho, we get there and they are outside Jamie's house and they are prepared. They have ski masks, um, uh, night vision goggles, honey, dressed in all black. Um, they sit and watch for a while and they actually get hungry. This is this is hilarious because see, I, they should have been prepared and brought snacks because I would have had food in the car, too. If you're going to be on a stakeout, you got to be prepared. You know, you, you got to have some snacks there. But they didn't. They didn't order DoorDash or something, y'all. And when the guy come up to the car, they like, wait, wait, wait. It, bring the food over here. So they get their stuff delivered and it's hot. But they still on DeMarco Trail, honey. They see DeMarco leaving. He getting ready to leave the house. They follow DeMarco somewhere. They are singing and carrying on. And actually, Astra is the one that is singing, lurking on the low, going to get DeMarco. So they are following him. And look, um, there's A-Love with her night vision uh, binoculars. I mean, so she is just really uh, serious here. <laughs> and they they really don't see much with DeMarco. They see him go to a house. They get a bag. They like, oh, this could be his grandma house or something. Well, it really could. We don't know who house it is. Y'all didn't see no woman. Y'all didn't see him get somebody some steamy kiss at the door. Um, but we see him come out with some bag. They like, oh, it could be a bag of condoms or something. They like, yeah, this could be his grandma house. Then one of them chime in like, well, he like he could he like young and old women. It don't matter. He probably still cheating with them. So they really don't find anything on Demarco, you guys. And it kind of ends comical. And we don't know what Demarco was doing. We have no idea. And 
So we don't know what they're going to do um, concerning DeMarco. What do you guys think? I really think they should stay out of Jamie's business. How is this going to go? Uh, we, we don't know. A-Love and 007, are they going to get along? And honey, we 00 should have made them greens. That's all I got to say about this episode. It was fun. I love this show. This show makes me want to glam up and show out. So I might do a live where I am actually in my little glam with my little nails on and, and with some makeup on because I love this show. And thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to like the video, uh, share it and subscribe to my channel. And like I said, have a good day. And thank you for watching.